let's talk about some of the signs and symptoms of both nightmare disorder and sleep terrors. And we're going to compare each of them to see the similarities and differences between these two conditions. Nightmare disorder occurs in REM sleep, and it's more likely to occur in the second half of a major sleep episode. So if you look at the sleep stages, a patient will go into stage one, two, three, four, and they will go from four into three to REM. And as the night goes on, the longer they've been sleeping, each cycle will have a bigger period of REM sleep. This is the reason why we can see nightmares occurring more frequently in the second half of the major sleep episode. Having said that, it can occur at any point during the night. And with regards to nightmares, they're going to be vivid and have a story-like feature to them. Because they occur in REM sleep, they're going to be a dream. But they're going to be very dysphoric, meaning that they're going to be very troubling and disturbing to the patient. So the patient can be very afraid when they awaken. And there may be some other negative emotions, including anger, disgust, and sadness that may occur as well with nightmares. With regards to sleep terrors, they occur in NREM sleep. So this is going to be slow wave sleep or deep sleep. So again, we can see here that we go into stage one, two, three, four. So stage three and four are going to be slow wave sleep or that deep sleep. So this is where we're going to see sleep terrors occurring. And as we can see later on in the night, more of the sleep stages will become dominated by REM sleep and less of slow wave sleep will take place later on in the sleep episode. So that is going to be the reason why we can see sleep terrors more likely occurring in the first third of the night, usually the first 90 minutes of sleep. So there's going to be a partial awakening from slow wave sleep. So it's not going to be the same type of awakening we see with nightmares. It's going to be partial awakening. We'll talk about this in more detail here in a moment. So sleep terrors are going to be simple, vague, and frightening images. They're not going to have that story-like feature that we see with nightmares. And the patient is often not going to remember a coherent dream. They're going to have what we would call amnesia for the sleep terror. So often they will awaken from this episode. They may be very disoriented and they may not remember what they've seen, but they know there has been some frightening images and they will not have that story-like feature that we see with nightmares. So getting into more detail with regards to nightmare disorder and sleep terrors, nightmare disorder, again, may or may not abruptly awaken a patient. So a patient may have a nightmare and then they may continue to sleep going through their regular sleep stages and may not even remember the nightmare or remember parts of it later on when they awaken. If they do awaken from the nightmare, it may be difficult getting back to sleep. They may be so troubled from the nightmare and the story that they've seen in the nightmare that they may have difficulty getting back to sleep. And nightmares can be associated with signs and symptoms of autonomic arousal, including sweating and shortness of breath. You can imagine if you're having a very scary experience, you can have sweating and shortness of breath because often patients in nightmares will be running or trying to get away from something. And nightmare disorder is associated with restless leg syndrome as well. In contrast to nightmares, sleep terrors have an abrupt or partial awakening. So it's abrupt because often the child who is experiencing the sleep terrors will immediately sit up and be awaken, but they're not quite awake. They don't know what is happening. They're disoriented. So there is partial awakening and they're often able to go back to sleep. They can have panicking and autonomic arousal. So they can have tachycardia, tachypnea, and sweating. So tachycardia is going to be an increased heart rate and tachypnea is going to be increased breathing rate. And it can resolve quite quickly. So they can have this very increased arousal. They can awaken, they can sit up quickly, but then they can calm down and go back to sleep. Screaming and crying is going to be common with sleep terrors. When they sit up quickly, they can start to scream and cry. So again, it's going to be often a child who may abruptly sit up, scream, but not be able to describe what has happened. They may just have this feeling of a very vague, scary situation or event. In adults, it's not going to occur as screaming or crying. It's often going to occur as agitation. So this can be something distinguishing adults with sleep terrors as opposed to children with sleep terrors.